Hello, and welcome to OLPH as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. We welcome all to fully participate in this celebration. Let us take a moment now to recognize God's presence in our lives. Thank you. The Mass last Saturday and Sunday were offered for Arlene Anthony and William Fisher, Maria Josefina Castano, Patrick Malik, and Elaine Zur Zurkus, Bruce Slag, and Arlene Anthony again, Corey Turiacello, and John Nicolay, Arunas Pazernas, and Apollonia Kazmir Turva. This weekend, the Mass is being offered for Patricia Malik, Eugene Plotz, Antonia and Eugenio Diaz, Tom Kendall, Rosemary Collins, John and Mary Lysi, Nancy Nija, Paul Demore, Gilda Renzulli, Jean Crow, Alexandra Antanas Lingus, Leonardo Petrosi, and Barbara Mackey. Let us sing together our opening song, This is the Feast of Victory. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate our e Eucharist on this third Sunday of Easter, we pause a moment calling to mind our sins. Remember the Lord died and rose so that we, our sins may be forgiven and we have hope for new life. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds wonders and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life you will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, in you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works. Conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Clophus said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how the chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one who redeemed Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and they did not find his body. They came back and reported that they indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. <clears throat> then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but they did not see him. And he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe that all, the pro- all that the prophets spoke. 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interrupted, interpreted for them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly raised, has been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place. Now he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a gentleman who said he was going to visit the United Kingdom. And while he was there, he was going to visit Greenwich. And somebody turned to him and said, and what are you going to do in the meantime? Some of you are probably laughing. Some of you are groaning. Some of you won't get, get it. Some will get it in about 15 minutes, and some people will never get it. It's not a good joke, but it's a good way of reminding, uh, I think, me at least, that sometimes I always don't always get it. And that's what's happening on the, to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They've heard all these things, they've seen a lot, but they were afraid. And what they were doing is they were running away from, from, from Jerusalem and going to Emmaus where they think they would be safe because Emmaus was considered a town that was in Roman hands. And they figured that since it was their fellow Jewish people who had killed Jesus, that they would be safer as followers of Jesus in a Roman town. And who did they encounter along the way? They encounter Jesus, but they don't see him. They don't get it yet. And they begin to ask him, have you heard what was going on? And of course, Jesus being Jesus, he does have a sense of humor if you read scripture. He says, what things? I mean, he's talking about himself. And they said, you know, how he was crucified. And, and then there's a report that he rose from the dead. How can this be possible? They didn't get it. But then what happens? Jesus doesn't, re he says, you know, are you foolish? But he's not being sarcastic. He's not being putting them down. He just said, remember that sometimes in life we don't get it. And then he began to tell them the story of, the, of his story in scripture from the very beginning, how he was destined to be a prophet, a teacher, a healer, and as a son of David and a son of, you know, son of the prophets, that he would die, but he would also rise again. And it begins to dawn on the disciples that, yes, there's something here, and they begin to feel something in their hearts that there's something different about this prophet. The same thing is happening with Peter in the Acts of the Apostles. They've been in the upper room and then suddenly Peter goes out and tells the people of Jerusalem what had occurred. And what does Peter do? He uses scripture to remind them about who Jesus is and how he is a you know, prophet among us and a child of David, a descendant of David, which is very important for the Jewish people. And they would have begun to get it. Oh yes, there has been a lot going on in these last days, but all of a sudden they're beginning to dawn on them that there is something new in the world, that there is something different. And eventually many people get it and they begin to understand what Jesus was about. I think sometimes in life, when, especially when in times of trouble, that we don't get what's going on. And we can get frustrated. We don't understand. We don't remember. We don't get it. But when we begin to to real, realize what is happening in life that we can eventually get. And I think one of the things during this time that we can turn to scripture. If you know, every time Jesus spoke, he usually brought 
the Hebrew scripture into the fold and reminded the people about who he was and what he was trying to accomplish. I think some, when we turn to scripture in times of sadness, in times of joy, in times of celebration, in times of mourning, that we can learn more about who God is in our lives. And I think because we're not here in church all the time, that we can continue to um, open the scriptures in our hearts by reading the scripture. If you don't have a Bible handy, you can always go to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and read the daily readings and the Sunday readings. By breaking open the scriptures, we better understand about our relationship with God and that in the time when we are most in need, that God is with us. In our times of hope and joy, that God is with us, that Jesus walks with us. And of course, the sum and summit of all we are about is when we gather together to break bread. We know that Jesus nourishes us so that we can live our lives as a follower of him. I know we cannot receive the Eucharist, but someday we will be back in this church and we will approach the altar, the, the, the minister of communion will say the body of Christ, we will say amen, and we will, which means it is so. Until that time, we need to discern, we need to continue praying, we need to continue to know that Jesus is walking with us. And even though we might not get it all the time, and I know I don't, that, that God doesn't give up on us. When Jesus said, what things? He wasn't making fun of the disciples. He was eliciting from them, you know, to look beyond where they were today and look to the future and see the possibilities and what can happen when we are followers of Jesus. In the, mean, in the meantime, we may not get it, but eventually, I think we'll understand. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us offer our petitions to our God who hears them. For Pope Francis, may he continue to be a strong advocate for the care and protection of our earth. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For national and world leaders, may they recognize at this time how connected we all are and acknowledge the need to care for one another as well as the planet we call home. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the world's people, may this time of isolation give us a new appreciation for the beauty and the bounty of our earth and renew our desire to protect her for future generations. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those living with domestic violence, especially at this time when they are feeling so isolated and alone, may they find resources to help them protect themselves and their families. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the essential workers who are on the front lines each day to keep our world turning, may God bless them for sacrificing their own safety for the sake of others. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick of our parish, 
for all those suffering from the coronavirus and for all caregivers. May they be comforted by our prayers and by the presence of God in their lives, especially infant Lincoln Martinson, James Wegleski, Celeste Siraki, Jerry Babis, Bray Lynch, Sharon Oliveira Seffret, Alice Lenart, Brian Corbett, Chris Wise, Patricia Brickenauer, Aldo Di Benedito, Maureen Kent, Jan Carlson, Jerry Wyland, Logan Progovich, and Patrick Stein. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, especially Jim Bregiel, Nancy Hollihan, Marie Christine Harmer, Mary Ellen Wolfe, Carol Adderjan, Susan Ockerland, Joseph Roger Tardif, Jane Marie Antwisic, Francis Kasrin, Martin Hardy, Marie Ann Merzwinski, and all of the victims of the coronavirus. May they find eternal peace and love in the arms of Jesus. We pray to the risen Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear and answer our prayers according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us lift our voices joyfully in song as we sing In the Breaking of the Bread.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your exultant Church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, once that was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to your soul. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grace will grant peace in our days. That, by the health of mercy, be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in, on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us sing together, Song of the Body of Christ. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Everybody, God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. And let us joyfully sing together, He is risen. Thank you.